Hi, everybody. I was asked to record the small presentation I did at the GLIA conference advocacy workshop. Um, and so I did it in about 10 or 15 minutes and ad libbed a little bit. But for the most part, this is uh, what I said. So good morning and welcome, everybody. I'm Patrick Winters, and I'm the GLIA advocacy committee co-chair. I'm pretty terrible at public speaking and just a little bit nervous, but I'm giving this introduction because Erica Barnes can't be here until a little later. I promise I will introduce myself a bit better um, because that's kind of the point of my introduction to this workshop. So when I started to write this introduction, the agenda had it titled The Current State of Advocacy. And I think it's well beyond me to provide a comprehensive assessment of advocacy in general. So just a little disclaimer, uh, the following opinions are my own, even though I think that my colleagues roughly agree with the sentiment. So what is the current state of advocacy? For me, this is it. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. And this is actually me two weeks ago at our first AGS Clinical Outcome Assessments Advisory Board meeting. And that's after a year of serving as one of the, quote, leaders of AGS advocacy. So I just want to get that out in the open. I think of myself as an intelligent, capable, and motivated person. So if I feel this way, I think that there's a good chance that some of you probably do too. I don't think that's going to be solved today, but know that this is where I'm at as the GLIA Advocacy Committee co-chair. Nonetheless, GLIA has invited and included us all here. Uh, so this is what they have to say about us. Uh, all of our organizations are united to help patients and families identify diagnostic and therapeutic options and to provide them with the best uh, care and resources. And so if that doesn't apply to you, or if you're not here to work with groups like this, I encourage you to go check out the zoo. Um, I've also heard that Reading Terminal Market is kind of neat. And apparently after cheese steaks, Philadelphia is known for its pretzels. Uh, so if you do stick around today, I'll be looking into these on Tuesday evening, which for everyone watching the recording, I did not get a chance to enjoy um, because I really love pretzels. So now if we're the Global Leukodystrophy Initiative Advocacy Partners, what is GLIA? I figured we could learn uh, by looking at some of their major projects. So uh, again, looking at their website, these are the four projects that GLIA has posted. Um, I'm betting that everyone's going to hear the phrase clinical trial readiness a lot over the next few days because this is one of GLIA's primary motivations. In short, the term refers to developing tools, understandings, metrics, etc., that will help any or all of our disorders have successful clinical trials. So GLIA is actively collecting data to establish the natural history of leukodystrophies. And then we have uh, three projects for spe specific disorders, um, but I gather that they all have the benefit of informing and guiding similar projects across all disorders. So there's a small chance that your disorder is on this list of active projects, but you're still here. So why were you invited? You're here to learn some of the aspects of clinical trial readiness. And just know that we're all here to figure out what we can together and to identify patterns and practices that may be relevant to your disorder of interest. So as far as clinical tr trial readiness is concerned, how do we work together when we're all over the map and there are so many different destinations to explore? So as a coalition of advocacy partners, we would ideally figure out some of this together, understanding where we're all coming from and where we all need to go so that we could establish a sort of this is how you get there map. Uh, with you know, established routes. But when it comes to mapping routes to navigate various aspects of clinical trial readiness, I don't even know if it's possible because who would map it, right? We're so different and the paths that we take will all be so unique with lots of twists and turns that any official map that we try to build will be so full of inefficiencies and mistakes and it probably wouldn't apply to everyone. I think it would end up looking more like this. So maybe we can untangle it all and find a way to leave breadcrumbs for others to follow. Uh, but I propose that we think of ourselves as explorers. We can help each other by charting regions and concepts as we encounter and explore them. But GLIA will not be able to handle, hand us anything that gets us through it all. So we are explorers. With GLIA's help, we're going to step into these unknown areas and try to figure out what's going on and map it as best as we can. Um, an example of this might be starting a patient registry, how to recruit for it, and ultimately what to do with it. These are landscapes that will have many features. 
um, and many approaches that may look very different for a disorder with thousands versus, versus a disorder with dozens. So I think we should acknowledge that we're all going to navigate these territories differently. So I encourage you to experience what you learn with that context in mind. Where are you? Where are you trying to go? What kind of tools, skills, and people do you have? And that focus is what I think has been missing in my experience as an advocate. So we are explorers, but today we're here to connect. I think this is primarily why we're here. We could have launched presentations from home, but we're at this event together and we have a number of collaborative sessions planned. We should strive to form networks with other advocacy groups, with industry, with scientists and clinicians. By identifying similar needs and circumstances, we can maximize our efforts. I personally don't have the time or energy to read every RDCRN email or digest and understand every advocacy group's efforts. But if I find out that another group similar to mine is a few steps ahead of me in an area that I'm interested in exploring, I'm going to get a lot more out of paying attention to them than trying to emulate an organization with a multi-million dollar budget. So to form connections, we need to understand each other in a few different ways. So I'm offering these as relevant icebreaker questions, but you should also consider your answers as context for everything you may learn during this conference. Think about how everyone's answer may differ. So the first question that I suggest that you ask yourself and others is why are you an advocate? My personal involvement here is a big, is just very big for me. And it probably is for many of you. I'm an advocate for one reason, this girl. So I feel an obligation to represent the needs and interests of my daughter. Um, and I like to make jokes about her wild hair and sly smile. But that's not exactly all of it. AGS affects my entire family. Our lives are intertwined. So I joined the AGSAA, the AGS Advocacy Association, because I wondered if I could help accelerate options for my daughter. I anticipate a long life for her. So AGS is not necessarily a primarily progressive disease. It's an immune mediated disorder that has the potential to be managed and controlled. My daughter began treatment relatively early and we haven't seen a single new sign of AGS in about four years. So I'm looking at my advocacy efforts through that lens. I don't need to cure AGS for my daughter if I can help her manage it. Think about how that might be different from your own personal motivations. For example, AGS probably won't benefit from gene therapy anytime soon. I probably won't be facing the challenge of building support for a big, expensive, one-time curative therapy. I really want to see more drug purposing for AGS using agents that are already FDA approved. So the second question I encourage you to ask each other is about the community you're advocating for. For me, this is my secondary motivation. And by being here, I represent um, all of these families that are affected by AGS. During Luca Dystrophy Awareness Month, I wrote highlights for 25 different families in 12 different countries. And even where the outcomes and circumstances were very different from my own, I share a lot of the same emotions and perspectives as all of these people that are forever worried about relapse. In terms of AGS advocacy, AGS is a complex heterogeneous disorder. And I think we need everyone in our community involved to build a comprehensive understanding so that we can be more effective. Because we're so different within AGS, we need large numbers to form meaningful conclusions. So for that reason, increasing engagement has recently been a big focus of ours. I wonder sometimes if we would be more impactful focusing on patient registry recruitment over funding early career research grants, for example. And that might be different for you and your community. Now, as uh, Devin and I said in our podcast, uh, she and Rafa weren't there for this. Um, so it was kind of funny to give a shout out to them, but they weren't there. But uh, before the third question, I said, I want to give a shout out to my AGSAA partners in attendance. Devin is my AGS and advocacy work wife. And sometimes I think I should have nominated her for this clear role so I could keep my head down. And Rafa is her daughter and my work buddy who, tends, who attends all of our meetings and offers me a lot of patience and understanding. So in Devin, I work with somebody that has a very different thought process from my own. We come to a lot of the same conclusions and opinions, but in very different ways. 
there's lots of value in us bouncing ideas around and bouncing them off of each other because we generally come up with something much better than we would have individually. So that really underscores for me the importance of personality, skill set, background, and experience. There aren't a ton of people jumping at the opportunity to do something like this. And I'll add that the audience giggled a little bit at that because uh, they're the people that did. Um, but it's important uh, for us to understand the individuals that we're working with. Uh, in your connections today, you might want to learn more about each other's backgrounds because they play a large role in our ability to collaborate well. We should find people to work with as much as organizations and institutions because good things can happen when the right group of people vibe together like Rafa and I. So the third question to help you learn more about each other is to help you learn more about each other individually. For, so for working with me, uh, this bit of context I think is as important as the details of the disorder I have staked in. So who am I? I'm Patrick Winters. I can stand here and give uh, an unprofessional or goofy presentation because this is not a professional matter for me. I have certain qualities and skills that might make, might make me suitable or unsuitable for a particular initiative. I'm the kind of person that you might want if you want to challenge a system or approach because I can comfortably take chances and risks to learn from them. I have a graduate degree in computer science with over a decade of professional software development experience. And I have a modest background in computational biology. I said modest. Uh, they put in the bio that I had a, a focus. I didn't have a focus. It's, it is modest, but still, there probably aren't too many people of us or too many of us advocates that have a grasp on molecular biology and can perform data analysis on a patient registry. So I think it makes me kind of unique, and I'm here to offer whatever I can. So now that you have the three icebreaker questions, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up by emphasizing once more that we are a coalition of advocates. Uh, by definition, that means we're an alliance for combined action. But unlike the members of the GLIA consortium, the scientists, we most likely all have a deep personal stake in what's happening here. And we come to this workshop with very different skills and challenges. Um, so four things to remember, uh, we're all trying to figure it out. Um, None of us know what we're doing, but that's where we start. Um, we're all uh, starting from and heading toward different places, and there's probably going to be no map that tells us what to do. I think we're here to learn about the different landscapes and work together um, by charting some of the features, opportunities, and pitfalls within them. And to do all of that effectively, uh, I think that we need to form networks and connections. And so learn what you can about others and connect other people um, when you think that they have similar needs or would work well together. And so now with all of that said, enjoy the workshop, go and make it so.